The CDC's conditional sailing order is now completely voluntary, leaving many of us to ask the question, what happens next? And the answer, at least for one cruise line, is to opt into the new voluntary CDC rules. And I never thought I'd say this, but we now have a cruise operator, an actual cruise operator with ships, big ones, now saying, do not, for any reason, fly in the day before your cruise. We want you to get to the airport and come directly to the cruise terminal. And if I had a dollar for every time I read a hit piece, I mean, journalism about the cruise industry, I'd be a pretty rich man by now. We're gonna cover the latest piece of crap coming out from the mainstream press. All this coming up on Midships. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Well, they say everything old is new again, and sometimes that's true. But it's not true in the case of the conditional sailing order. That's right. Na 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 na. Hey hey, goodbye. The conditional sailing order has officially expired and now it's become a voluntary program. So let's take a look at what happens next for the cruise industry. From cruiseradio.net by Sarah Bretz. With the conditional sailing order now expired in its place, the CDC has introduced a new voluntary program that cruise lines may opt into for cruise ships operating in U.S. waters. The CDC is asking that cruise lines opt into the program by January 21st. If they do, they'll have to follow the agency's recommendations and their ships will continue to receive a color status based on reported cases of COVID on board. The current color status chart is as follows. Green, no cases. Orange, reported cases are below the threshold for investigation. Yellow, reported cases have met the threshold for CDC investigation. And red, reported cases are so high that additional public health measures must go in place. If a cruise line decides to opt out of the voluntary program, their ship will be listed in gray color status on the CDC's website. The new voluntary program, along with comments from the CDC director regarding the decision not to renew the CSO, indicate the agency feels confident in the cruise industry's COVID prevention and mitigation measures. And while the new program is similar to the original CSO, it's not exactly the same. Let's look at some of the specifics from the new voluntary program. So first and most importantly, the threshold for CDC investigation will go from 0.1% passenger cases or one or more crew cases to 0.3% passengers and or crew on board the ship. And this will be yellow or orange under the color-coded system. Red status criteria is also being updated. Pre-cruise testing requirements will continue and ships with at least 95% fully vaccinated crew and passengers may continue to reduce or eliminate measures on board like masks and physical distancing. And amongst the handful of other criteria for the voluntary program includes random inspections from the CDC, which sounds really fun if you ask me. Who doesn't love a government official knocking on your door saying, let me see everything you got going on? Sounds great. Wow, have fun. And the other big thing being eliminated is this simulated voyage to bring a cruise ship back online. And at the top of today's episode, I let you know that one cruise line has already decided they're going to opt in to this new CDC program. Let's find out exactly who that is. After a message from our sponsor, me, Midships, I want to remind you, down in the description below this video, there's an Amazon influencers link that will take you to my Amazon store. In there, you can find cruise swag priced from 10 to maybe 20 bucks. It's all the items I take with me on every single cruise. And the best part is just clicking on the links there does help give back to this channel and support my work just a little bit. I also want to take a quick second and remind you that Midships is on Instagram. If you'd like to follow our account, just search for us. It's Midships Cruise. I'll also put a link up here in the upper right hand corner. And last, for those of you who are new here to the channel, all of the articles referenced in today's episode are linked in the description below the video. Now let's hop back into that news about the cruise line opting in for the CDC's voluntary program. From cruiseindustrynews.com, Norwegian Cruise Line will opt in to the new CDC program. Norwegian today announced the company's three brands, Norwegian, Oceana, and Regent Seven Seas Cruises, have all opted into the U.S. CDC's program for cruise ships to operate in U.S. waters. The program comes into effect after the expiration of the temporary extension and modification of the Framework for Conditional Sailing Order on January 15th. And we have a quote from Frank Del Rio, President and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. And Frank says, The health and safety of our guests, crew, and communities we visit is our number one priority. We have demonstrated this commitment since our return to service in July of last year with protocols that exceeded those required by regulatory agencies, including 100% vaccination of guests and crew. 
universal testing of all guests prior to embarkation, and routine testing of all crew. Furthering our commitment to health and safety with the expiration of the conditional sailing order, all three of our brands have opted in to the new CDC Voluntary Program, which provides the cruise industry with a set of operating provisions to protect the health and safety of guests and crew. So for most of us in the know, Norwegian Cruise Lines joining the Voluntary CDC Program is really no surprise. Frank Del Rio and company have been by far the strictest cruise line throughout the pandemic about all of their mandates and everything in place on board their cruise lines. And I know some of you out there in the midships family have even flamed me down in the comments for calling out Frank Del Rio for being stricter than all of the other cruise lines. If that's you, well, our next segment might come as a surprise to you because I'm about to come to the defense of Frank Del Rio and Norwegian Cruise Lines. Because now we're gonna take a look at one of the most sensational, ridiculous pieces of journalism that I've seen in a while. And to be quite honest with you, I'm considering making an official segment on this channel entitled, Crap Journalists Say About Cruising. Let's go ahead and learn more from thehill.com. By journalist Cameron Jenkins, passengers stuck at sea after Norwegian cancels cruise mid-voyage. And yes, I'm going to go into my irony voice I'm sorry, I know some of you don't like it. Passengers aboard a Norwegian ship are stuck at sea this week after the cruise line decided to cancel the cruise mid-voyage due to COVID concerns. And one of those passengers is Amy Ficario, who boarded a 10-day-long cruise on the Norwegian Gem from, remember, New York City, according to USA Today. Amy told USA Today that she was notified Thursday that the cruise would be canceled due to issues related to COVID-19, but was not provided with an anticipated return date to New York. That's because the cruise that was canceled had already left port. The passengers were already on board. Amy went on to say, we will arrive back in New York as per schedule on the 19th in the morning. Vicario went on to detail that after the ship made a stop in St. Martin on Friday, it would not be making any other stops in any other ports or islands. And this is the point at which this article proves that journalism might really be dead in this country. Amy went on to say, I really can't imagine four sea days back to back without much to do. Okay, okay, just hold up here for just a second. Amy, thehill.com, USA Today, hold your dang horses here because I just want to point something out here about these four sea days. This is a website called cruisewatch.com. I recommend all of you check it out. It's not sponsored. It's just something I use to kind of check prices and itineraries for ships. Uh, as you can see, we are looking at the January 9th, 10 night Eastern Caribbean cruise that Amy is currently on. Let's go ahead and check out the itinerary. And just to prove it, this is the Norwegian gem. Let's check out the itinerary here. And you can see, wow, all right. So we're going down to Grand Turk, St. Thomas. So that's kind of a long distance from New York. About how many sea days do you think that takes? Well, let's see, it takes two days at sea to get there, and two days at sea to get back. And what that means is that Amy willingly paid, let's see, somewhere between $860 to $2,300 to go ahead and sail on four sea days on this cruise ship. And I'd like to be very precise in what I'm about to say here, because this is not a roast of the cruise passenger. Amy, leave that person alone. This is a roast of the journalists at USA Today and The Hill for not simply being able to look this up and say, wait a second, they quite frankly smelled blood in the water to this story, didn't even bother to look up the itinerary and know that there were already four sea days that all of these passengers volunteered to take aboard this ship. What the heck kind of journalism is this? None of the journalists there were able to push back and question her as to why she's suddenly upset. Cameron Jenkins from The Hill, quite frankly, you should be ashamed of yourself for writing this article. It shows in your work how little time you've actually put in to this piece of journalism. So from one story that made your blood boil to the next, there's now a cruise line that's legitimately telling passengers, don't fly in the night before your cruise. Make sure you fly in on the same day you're cruising. Let's learn more from cruiseindustrynews.com. Two E clamps down, not allowing pre-cruise overnights. And if you're not familiar with two E cruises, go ahead and look up the words mine shift you'll learn a little more. Tui Cruises has told guests on select sailings they cannot board the ship if they have booked a pre-cruise stay or an overnight before the start of their trip at the port. Coming on the heels of that news, the company will also now require booster shots. The German brand is essentially telling guests to fly straight to the ship with no pre-cruise activity whatsoever. The company also said it will only take bookings with arrival and departure packages, i.e. flights, it books for guests along with the cruise allowing it to control the full journey. 
Post-cruise stays are still okay. Well, obviously, it's your life. You can do what you want. Exceptions are being granted for guests who have already booked flights or other transportation, which will be checked by the cruise line at embarkation. So that's a little bit strange, telling people to fly in the day of their cruise, especially with all the trouble going on in the airline industries. I do want to remind you that 16 days from now, I will be sailing from Port Canaveral aboard the Carnival Liberty. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss my coverage on board the ship. So if you made it this far into the episode today, make sure you smash the thumbs up button to tell the YouTube algorithms to push this video out to more cruisers like you. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. And until next time, we'll see you on the midships. That was a long episode. Holy moly.